Good afternoon, everybody. Are we are we recording? I can We're go. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, good afternoon. So this is the last of our series of arts. Uh, spirituality and the arts and what we're going to look today at are the um, the great ceremonial chants of the Navajo Nation. Um, great ceremonial chants are a series of healing ceremonies. Some of them are designed for healing someone who is physically sick. Some of them are blessing ceremonies which may be for um, fertility, whether it be a family that's trying to have a child or for a community that's in growth or harvest or things like that. They have various different types of ceremonies um, depending on what time of year they want to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sc share screen just because I have, you know, being a college professor, I am PowerPoint king. So um, let me tell you, let's make sure I click everything. I'm still not the Zoom king, but I'm close. Um, let me tell you a little bit about where I come from in terms of studying the Navajo. Um, I come from being in a meeting once with the department chair from Denison University where I teach and he said, hey, we need someone to teach world music. And I'm like, what is world music? I had no idea. So between that meeting, which was in June and September of that year, I um, became a quote unquote expert on ethnomusicology, which is the study of music in various different ethnic groups around the world. Um, that was about 15 years ago, and I've been teaching the class at least once a year, if not twice a year, ever since. Um, it's an introductory course, Introduction to World Music, for students of all backgrounds. Not very few music majors, actually no music majors or minors are allowed to take it for credit. They can take it if they want to as an elective, but not to add toward their degree. Uh, it's designed for the sort of the lay person, if you want to say that. Um, let's see. So when, oh, and in that class, we also, we look at not the Native American culture, but we also look at Indonesian culture, African, um, Arabic, Latin American, and I, for a great period of time, got to do Japanese music, but then that was taken out of the textbook. So I, unfortunately, no longer do Japanese music, which was one of my favorite. But I think the, the Native American music is, is just about my favorite to look at. For one thing, the students have access to it. They, um, there's potential, more potential that they will go to a Native American powwow than they will ever go to see music in Indonesia or you know, Latin American music, of course, they grew up with, but folk music of, of the Latin world is a different story as opposed to you know, bebop or hip hop or something like that. Um, so anyway, Back to the Navajo. What we're going to look at are the uh, ceremonial chants, um, and there are many, but the enemy way ceremony, the blessing way ceremony, the night way ceremony, just to name one of a hundred, or three of a hundred, I guess I should say. Um, let's see if I can get myself to go forward. Here we go. So the Navajo, um, as you probably know, is um, large a uh, tribe that's centered in the southwest of the United States, what is now the United States, has been there for centuries, of course. Um, the reservation is the largest of the Native American nations, and including the, the first peoples of Canada. Uh, the Navajo is still the largest of the group, and it, it covers four different states. There are small tribes like the Tsuni, who have small reservations, small enclaves within um, within the Navajo thing, I always think of it as sort of as being Bexley, sort of stuck inside the middle of Columbus. And so the, the Tsuni are kind of like, you know, kind of like Bexley. Um, so there you see it's closer. And then the Hopi reservation, can you all see my mouse as I wiggle it? Yes, good, okay. So the Hopi reservation is in there. The Tsuni are down and they, it's not on this map, but they're down sort of in this area. Um, I love the Zuni just because I have a recording of a little grandmother singing a lullaby, and I, I, which I refer to a lot. I will not take time to play her now. She's a very cute little old lady. Um, so anyway, the, the Navajo, uh, Dine is the official name of the Navajo people. So, or Dine, I guess is how they actually say it. Uh, so they, like the Germans would say the Deutsch, or 
die Deutsch. Uh, but the Diné are the, um, the Navajo people. Their primary god or deity is Changing Woman, uh, which is important because that means that all of a sudden now we have a matrilocal, matrilineal, matricidal, not matricidal, sorry, uh, but a, a mother-based society. So ignore some of the things on these slides just because they were designed for people who are going to sooner or later have to take a quiz. So matrilineal means, sorry, uh, matrilineal means that it's a, it's a society where people f trace their lineage through their mothers. It's like the Jewish faith. You, you know, you follow your family through, through the, your mothers, not through your fathers. And um, when a couple gets married, they go off and live with the mothers, or the wives, family and they they live in their maternal areas as opposed to the patrilineal patrilocal which is what the predominant culture is here in the united states and certainly is what the culture is in africa um so anyway changing woman is the um principal deity she was the the i would i hate to use the word myth but the story is the the sacred tale is that changing woman went to bathe in sunlight and she had two sons after and she became pregnant and she had two sons one of which is uh, a warrior god named enemy slayer and the other is um named born of water and this is a picture the picture you're seeing in front of you are two dancers who would be taking part in these great ceremonial chants um and they are dressed as two Two of these, what are called Yebeche, which are these ancestral gods. Uh, enemy, in this case, it's Enemy Slayer and Born of Water. Um, and their job, as it says here, they you know, were to kill the, the monsters and the evil monsters that were harming, harming humanity. So their, their role in the world was to protect humanity. Um, the Navajo people have these great ceremonial chants and they do these or what they do during these a number of things but one of which is they they dress up in costuming which includes i'll back up just a split second you see a burlap hood they've got a burlap bag over their heads and then they paint their bodies you can see these these two men have don't have shirts on they've got symbols painted on their body and then they've got their their rest of their regalia the rest of their outfits um, and these become part of the the rituals, part of the dance. Um, you've probably all seen pictures of powwows where they're all in the big feather headdresses and costuming. And their regalia is just as much a part of the dance as is the actual dance and the drum and the music and the singing. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and I'm gonna play this piece that's called the Yebeche song. And um, it's just one of the ch one of the many hundreds of chants that come out of the either blessing way, night way, enemy way. And I think this one officially, I think, comes from one of the enemy way ceremonies, but they're interchangeable. So uh, could come from any of these ceremonies. Um, v Virgil Nez is an artist of the Navajo. So I tried to since we're doing arts and spirituality, I tried to mix a little bit of dance, a little bit of vocal, a little bit of instrumental, and some visual arts as well. So we hit a little bit of everything here. Um, but So Nez has a number of these paintings, and I'll just let you listen to the Yebeche song, and then we'll talk about the song more in a, few, in a couple minutes. But just to hear, see his paintings, and I'll let you read the little captions that describe what the paintings are. Now let's just hope this sound works. Give me a thumbs up, Stacey, if you sound, still get sound.
I said, I will come back to talking more about the, the song here in just a second. I just had to flip forward to stop the song. Um, this is probably the most important of the, of the paintings that Nez did, simply because it shows the dancers at dawn. So these ceremonies, the enemy way, night way, blessing way, they, they go on for days. They can be nine days, at most nine days long, and they usually start around dusk, and they go all night, and they end at dawn, okay? And there's usually, there is a, what's called a, a ceremonial practitioner who is the man, usually a man, who knows all of the chants, all of the songs, and leads them all. And um, so he runs these nine nights. It's, he's sort of the, the lead singer as well as the master of ceremony. He's the officiant, if you want to call him that. Um, probably the term that most of us would know is medicine man. He is kind of the spiritual leader, the, sort of the medicine man of the culture. Um, but the reason this painting is important, as is the Dawn Sprinkler, this one back here, is that the most, most holy and most blessed time of all of these ceremonies is the end of every night at the dawn, as the sun rises. And before we leave today, I will make sure I fly through a bunch of these other things because we've got to get to a video of seeing the end of the ceremony where people are um, um, welcoming the dawn. Because as we all know, and they believe this heavily in their society, if the sun doesn't come up the next day, nothing else really matters, right? I mean, there isn't a whole lot else to expect if the sun doesn't rise. So um, they honor that very much. This paint, sand painting is very much part of the ceremony and we will come back to the sand paintings here in just a minute. Um, so here you see one of the Yeveche dancers with his burlap bag and um, all of his, his costuming. This video um, is about four minutes long, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this. It gives sort of an idea of, of the ethos and the purpose for these enemy way, night way ceremonies. Um, one thing that it does do is it very much is someone who was playing with how fonts work on PowerPoint. So there are points where you're just sort of like, Ugh, what are they doing? But for the most part, it, it tells a lot. Usually by the time I get to this point of this, or get to this video in my classes, I'll say, now to recap, let's listen to this video, which will go over everything that we've been talking about for the last half hour. So we're going to instead just jump right into the recap, um, which we'll talk more about recaps on Sunday. Um, with the sermon about Beethoven, but that's another story. Um, so let me find my play button. Here we go. So I'm going to be quiet again and let the, this video talk for a moment. Oh, no, it didn't. Come on. There it is. Let's <laughs> 
So that takes us, um, gives you a basic idea. The ceremonies are a recreation of the um, uh, creation story is usually part of these great ceremonies. Uh, probably the most important thing they want to do though is create some sort of harmony some with nature, a, a hutso'o they call it, which is this blessing, a blessingness. Um, these are, again, PowerPoints from my class, so you can not worry about too much of it. The patient is referred to as the one sung over. And the Navajo, as all Native Americans, believe very much in Western, music, Western medicine. They go to hospitals, they do all of that, but then when they come back to their community, they have these ceremonies. Say they've been to the hospital, um, they come back and they, and they just cleanse their spirit. So it's not a healing in, in terms of a physical healing. I mean, they, there's some aspect of that, but it's mostly a spiritual healing. Um, if someone goes off to, to the army and goes off to Afghanistan or wherever, when they come back to the community, they'll have an enemy way ceremony, which sort of expels the, the evil spirits, the, 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 dead, the death that's been around them. Um, let's see. I'm going to, because I know we don't have time to do it, I'm going to skip all these various parts and just go slowly through here. These are the days, the different things that happen one day after another, after another, after another. There's a great sand painting. Um, and those sand paintings happen day after day after day. And they, they're very intricate. And each thing means something. Every, every symbol means something. Um, and then they, um, they wipe them away. So they don't keep these. They, you know, they take hours to create, and then they just wipe them away. And the next day they start start fresh, um, and they end with the the ninth day is this sort of the the, the great thunder dance, the thunderbird dance, and and the and the big celebration of the dawn definitely comes at the very end. Big celebration there. Let me give you a quick touch on some of the symbolism. So this is Mother Earth, here on the right. This is Father Sky on the left. Mother Earth, you see tobacco, corn, wheat, soybeans, all kinds of things growing on her belly. Um, Father Sky, you see the Milky Way across his arms. You see the sun and the moon in the middle. You see that their hands and their feet are all covered with pollen. So this, this has to do with, with fertility, whether it be for harvest or for, for a family. Um, Every, everything, all these little things in the corner all mean something. Um, right he, their, their stripes on their face, the blue represents the, the sun of the day, the brightness of the day. The yellow is sort of twilight, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. The black is, of course, night. And the white is in, on top is the dawn. Uh, because again, the dawn is the most important. You both, you see that they're both sitting on clouds that represent the other, the other entity, and that of course Father Sky is on top of Mother Earth. So because the sky is on top of the Earth. Um, so that's just, I mean, those are very simplistic versions of what these symbols. You saw how intricate 
in the video how intricate some of these things can get. Um, okay, now the music. What you just heard in the video was you heard people singing or chanting, but you also heard the Native American flute, Native, the flute playing through some of that video. Uh, that is the only melodic instrument that the Native American peoples have. They have drums, they sing, well, the voice is melodic, but, but the only wind instrument or stringed instrument they have is a flute, is Native American flute, which you just heard there. It went out of fashion for a long period of time, about 20, 30 years ago, it came, started to come back into fashion. So if you ever go to a powwow, you will hear people playing, playing the flutes. Um, two songs that I'm just going to play very quickly excerpts from. The one you just heard is called the Yebeche song. And it's made up of completely of vocables. Vocables are just syllables that don't translate. So they're words that aren't really words. Uh, this, my eyesight is bad. Hi, 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 yi, hi, yi, hui, yi, hui, he, hu. They don't translate. It's, I always use the analogy. It's like if you did um, deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. The fa la la's are the, um, the equivalent to these vocables. The important thing is this is an entire song of vocables, but you can't change the syllables. So it's not just nonsense sound. They're actually repeating these same syllables. It's like us doing deck the halls with boughs of holly, dooby 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 doo. It's just not right. You know, it has to be fa la 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 la. So same deal, same thing with this. And we've listened to this piece, so I'm just going to start it to refresh your memory. Um, <laughs> A couple just quick things, then we'll move on to another song. This one is a leader followed by a group. It's almost always male. Uh, the, the singers at the, at the drum are usually male. This one has rattles, it doesn't have a drum. Um, but there would be dancing to this, and uh, even though it's in vocables, it, it, tells a, it tells the same story or has an ev evocation of the same spirit. Um, then later, let me do that. Let me do that. Um, later in the ceremony, we would have what are called or a song called Shizene'e, which is a circle dance. Um, there are style of these songs called Nda'a, which are um, more informal. There's a chance for the men and the women to dance together. This is a flirtatious song uh, that it has actual words that translate, and there's the translation. I'm in luck. I'm in luck. She's leaning upon the storefront, looking everywhere for me. This has an undertone of being about prostitution as well. So the, uh, the Navajo society is, has throughout history been very misogynistic in many ways, which is strange given that it's a matrilineal society and uh, the chief deity is, is female, but a lot of their songs have a little bit of that undertone to them. Because you think of this as being a love song, I mean, you think of it as being a love song, but then you take that and it's like, oh. Um, but as we listen to it, now you'll see that um, this transcription, oops, there we go. Uh, this transcription has some vocables at the beginning that just wo yo wo yo yo. But when we get down here to this middle section, you'll hear some actual text. Uh, let me play a bit of this song. <laughs> And that, and that just keeps that keeps repeating but you notice that it's it's very um, very calm there's no drums it's it this would be a circle dance so it'd be a very very simplistic dance I realize we're at hey, so I'm gonna yeah. forward um, skipping all this extra and go to this whoops back up uh, I want to play one last bit and I'm even not going to play this whole video uh, hopefully it's gonna... the code yeah. will move to this part of the I'm going to skip to about here mm -hmm. and this is a very rare thing. This is a video of an actual celebration. The, the, the Navajo people, all Native American people, do not, do not like having these ceremonies recorded. 
simply because these are powerful events and they don't want the risk that it's going to lose its power. It's not any of that, you know, the camera's going to steal our souls or any of that. It's not that. It's just simply they know these are important and they don't want guys like me getting a class of students to try to recreate this stuff because that's not what it's supposed to be. These, it, it would be like someone playing priest on the side of the street, you know, and just somebody pulling out a, ca a chasuble or something and, and trying to have church on the corner without ever having, you know, any idea what Christianity is. Um, but we do have this short video. Uh, this is a trailer for a documentary that's like five hours long. So I won't play all that for you, but I will play this. And this is the dawn. This is, um, so we got about two minutes here and then, then we'll be done. This is the, the appearance of the sun at the end of one of these long ceremonies. Oh, come on, cooperate. Mother Earth, and to the directions of the four winds. Before we start our work, we must send this prayer. All the people of the tribe can see how the dancers are suffering. They know the prayers of the dancers are made on behalf of the whole tribe. Sometimes an elder will stand by the singers and offer his own song. A song to encourage the dancers, to tell them what they are doing is good and that the tribe appreciates their sacrifice. This gives the dancers strength to go on. The moment the first streak of light comes up over the hill. All the dancers stretch out their hands towards the sun and then pass them over their body to bless themselves. After the whole sun has risen over the horizon, the song ends. This is a very sacred time. And that brings us to the end of that. Um, it's weird because that's actually a video. I mean, you can, instead of the stop action, it actually is a video and this connection for some reason isn't giving me that. These are buried on a shared drive at Denison. So, um, but you, you saw all the images, just imagine them all smoothly going together. Um, so that brings us to the end and I have to give you a, a little quick promo commercial and that is if you ever want to go to a powwow there is one less than a mo less than an hour from columbus the great mohican powwow the one ad this is the ad for this year you can see the one in july is canceled because of the co uh, covid issues but there is one in september i if possible i take my students and we take an afternoon and go go up there and get a chance to see it so um with that, I will, I will stop and see if there's any questions, comments, thoughts. So go ahead and um, unmute if you wish to say something. Oh, Kevin, that? how do they get the different colors for the sand? I honestly don't know. I'm assuming they, they mix it with, with various things. The yellow I know is, is they mix pollen into it. Yeah. Kevin, is there a schedule for having these uh, uh, dance ceremonies, obviously the ones for someone who's ill or someone who's come back from Afghanistan are yeah. scheduled around that. But do they uh, do the other? Is there a schedule for the other ones, or is it just ad hoc? It's it's ad hoc. They don't they don't like every sun. You know, it's not like every Sunday morning, like we do. You know, they don't have a specific liturgical time. They do them a, as need, um, but they happen frequently. I mean, each family, um, I was reading something this morning that said a fam for a family to go more than a year without having one of these ceremonies um, is unusual. So they have them frequently. Kevin, you showed us sand 
the sand painting, which was absolutely incredible, and the colors also were um, so vivid. It was interesting. But we also saw um, the paintings on Hyde. How do they translate from one to the other? It is the one on Hyde just to be um, a painting of sorts. Yeah, those are those are more just artworks. They they would be sort of you know like wall painting or you know the the great cave paintings from ancient times, whereas the sand paintings are the actual um, spiritual events that they're creating. So I was sitting there thinking of if they couldn't put it in sand due to some reason, would a medicine man carry a painting per se? And that have yeah. centered on that and be able to do something. Is it there's some medical piece to the tan? Oh, not that not that I know of. That I that I don't know. Yeah. Thanks, that, that that makes me think of the impermanence of the sand. Mm -hmm. And if I heard saw it right that there was a sense that this needed to go away because this was very dangerous. Yeah. We had danger associated with it. We tend to think of art as being archival and permanent and, mm -hmm. and art history and so forth. And this is very ephemeral in that sense. And Buddhist monks do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. They create these beautiful sand paintings and brush them away. And then, for them, it's the, it's the process of doing it. You know, it's the mm -hmm. meditation and, and all of that, which is part of this, but it's also the, the ev evoking of the spirit. Mm -hmm. In the continual creation, I love how they talked about when the story is retold, creation happens anew again. So, um, which ties in with the impermanence piece of it, but the constant renewal right, exactly. uh, of life and of people. It's also really good Eucharistic, Christian Eucharistic theology. The Greek word is anamnesis, meaning remembrance. And uh, as has been said, this is a remembrance that's not a nostalgia trip. Remember when we went to, you know, Ocean City, New Jersey years ago, Fred, you know, it's not that. Yeah. It's, it's um, as although that's fun to remember like that, but Eucharist is remembrance to make the member again created in the Eucharist. That's why everything is fresh and new each time it's, it's mm -hmm. celebrated. Well, oh. we were, Kent and I were just talking about the song Morning is Broken the other day, and we, I was joking about the fact that people always say recreation of a new day, and it's recreation. It's about <laughs> recreating a new day. It's not recreation. <laughs> Psalm 30. I'm sorry, Fred. Go ahead. No, I'm just laughing at that. Yeah. Psalm, Psalm 30, which is on page 621 in the prayer book, if you are interested. Uh, verse 6 says, weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I understand that that was um, probably more than any other uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, go-to text. He preached on that more often than anything else. That one verse, weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. And that's exactly what you're talking about, the power of dawn being yeah. the centerpiece, you know. That whole Psalm 30 is about healing and singing and giving praise to God. Psalm 30 is well worth it for us today. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So we are well over time, and I apologize for that. But this is edited down from about three hours worth of lectures. I don't apologize. It was it was wonderful. Thank you. Just well worth it. Yes, and um, your insight along with the videos, Kevin. I mean, this really was a magnificent, magnificent capstone to the series with the art, the music, and the cultural tied in. So, mm. um, in thank general, you so much. In your general presentation. Uh, the volume of your voice, the cadence of your introduction, just felt like, yeah, he's a professor. <laughs> a good one, a good a, professor. A really good professor. Good and professor. I really um, uh, want to thank you for that, because sometimes it's hard to hear, but you were just so interesting. I, I never wanted to close my eyes. <laughs> yeah, Kevin will also be the preacher this coming Sunday when, when if it's, Day of Pentecost is focusing on sound as well as word. Um, and uh, you, you, a tribute, I don't know, I don't want to jump again, but some of it's going to be tribute to 250th birthday of Beethoven, but uh, mm -hmm. the spirit moving through, through the music. And Kevin's a brilliant pianist. And 
we've got the sermon time this Sunday at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live. <laughs> good, pr good promotion there. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the conclusion of our series, Spirituality and the Arts, and this series was really born out of a desire to do something in the Easter season and to remind us of God's continual renewal. Um, it ties in directly with the theme of making all things new. So in that creativity and spirit dwelling in each one of us and exploring it in our personal spiritualities as well as spiritualities within the collective group so many many thanks to all our presenters to all who participated in the sessions and um, for those of you that are watching the recorded version um, feel free to send us your comments thoughts and interpretations too and dick is going to send us forth with a blessing right and and i think stacy we're planning on coming together in adult formation yeah. on soon um on next following Sunday, Trinity Sunday, the 7th, is that right? Correct, yes, thank you for adding that. So we'll, so we'll stay tuned, but it will be Sunday mornings at 9, not the Wednesday um, beginning. Um, so, what, so what's happening Sundays at 9, starting? It'll be adult formation, which um, we typically do before um, church, and our church service, and we're going to do it in an electronic format. So there will be a variety of topics, from 9 a.m. to 9.40 a.m. on Sundays, and then we'll transition into worship. And we so, can get those from the Trinity website. Mm-hmm. The access to, okay, great. Yep. Yeah. So two more dial-ins, Fred and Carol, and we'll send you a pledge card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a deal. <laughs> okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let's pray. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do God's will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. In be glory from generation to generation. Amen. 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 Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.